So I wasn't really sure if I was going to make a video on this, but I figured I'd better take you guys along for the ride. I wasn't going to get started on the Malibu. Honest to God, was the next, like I pulled the cover off and everything. And as soon as I did that, I'm pretty sure my cars have personalities and they also have attitude problems. As soon as I did that, uh, the 50 here started developing a very bad oil leak coming out of, well, the rear of the motor. Where exactly? I don't really know. My suspicions are the rear main seal. And that's kind of what I'm investigating right now. So far, uh, I got the transmission pulled. I had to actually make a special transmission jack because I'm, I'm out here by myself and I don't need that thing crushing me at all. So I'll show you guys that thing in detail and maybe you guys can build something similar for a 4L80 or whatever transmission you got lying around. Simple, easy. I, I've used some scrap metal that I had lying around. But now I got to remove the flex plate, kind of look up in there and see if it's actually the rear main seal or what. And I don't know, like this car always had a little bit of an oil leak and it always has been in the back and it's always been inside of the foil ADE inspection cover or whatever you want to call that, kind of where it was coming from, just, just that general area. I thought it was the valve covers because those were always a little bit leaky. But now that I fixed that problem, it still developed the same thing. And I went on to a spirited drive with the thing just because, you know, sometimes you got to beat on your children. It's fine. And after that, it, it threw a fit. And I had puddles of oil underneath the car after that. It didn't like it at all. So either I blew the rear main seal out or this catch can thing that I just got done building might be a culprit as well. Like it's not getting enough breathing pressure out of it and it's holding it in and it's got to find a way to escape. And that's where it decided to escape. So I just investigating, we'll fix it. We'll put it back together and we'll get it back on the road. So yeah, let me show you what I got done so far and then we'll keep tearing it down. Naturally, you got to get this guy up in the air in order to get the transmission out. Like I said before, 4 little ADE, got a fancy smanchy circle B converter on that guy, which I absolutely love. Um, but yeah, you can't get to the back of the engine with the transmission in the way. So I had to take out exhaust, obviously cross member. And this is my little, um, let's see if we can kind of see it. So that's my 4LL80E transmission jack stand thing that actually bolts to the jack itself. And it's super sturdy. Like it's not going anywhere because it kind of like locks it in where the pan is. Um, like I said before, I'll, when I, when I get this guy back up in there, I'll show you this thing in depth, but that is a total game changer for trying to take that thing out and not killing yourself. Um, I need to get back underneath there. I need to take the flex plate off and then we'll just, we'll just look at it. We'll see where the oil is coming from. Hopefully there's some telltale signs of why it's leaking and where it's leaking from. And we can just address it from there. I already have on order a new rear main seal and also that rear gasket for the cover plate. So uh hopefully that can kind of solve some of the issue i don't know where else it'd be leaking from i don't yeah this is honestly this is such a pain in the butt it's a kick in the, the you know what's if you know what i mean so yeah let's get underneath there take the flex plate off and let's look together we'll learn together welcome to the future of this video but the past of now Does that makes sense sure i just wanted to show you guys the 4l 80e little hoist thing that I made that bolts up to the jack here quick a second so I don't forget. So I was debating on going to Harbor Freight or something and getting a transmission jack because uh, getting a 4L80 in and out by yourself is a big pain in the butt, but I had some scrap metal lying around and a little bit of time. So I went ahead and I built this guy here. It's just some two by two stock with some uprights. So that fits around the pan exactly. And I just take welded it all together and it bolts to the jack itself where the pad itself used to bolt. So that, that guy right there just unscrews and then that whole system can come off. Um, but this, you know, spins, it's very sturdy. Obviously it worked because the car is all back together and I didn't die. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, if you're feeling ambitious, go ahead and build one yourself. It's a couple of measurements, a little bit of welding, a little bit of cutting, not in that order, but yeah, uh, go, back, go back to the past now. All right, so just looking at it from here, the face surface of the flex plate has no, that's nice and dry. 
Um, I'll try to do this so you guys can see as well. But all these bolts have quite a bit of oil on them. That's covered in oil too. But the bolts here are not, so maybe it's leaking out of the rim rain and just kind of flinging it everywhere. Might be my guess. Um, it's dry up on my cam signal and oil pressure sensor, and the heads are dry where the valve covers and stuff are. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, let's let me get this guy out of the way. So it is definitely uh, coming from this rear main seal here. And then as soon as it hits the flex plate, it, it just throws it out. And then that's why all these bolts are wet, I think. Um, all of the flex plate bolts were properly, you know, lock tight thread sealing in. Uh, because these are through, you can see uh, the main cap from, you know, through these holes. So obviously you've got to use some kind of thread sealant uh, Loctite on these guys. And th those were all dry. So it wasn't coming from there. It's definitely coming from this rear main based on how much puddling is up underneath this thing. So um, take out all these bolts, these two bolts, and this whole cover should come off. Uh, I'm still waiting on the new cover, but I'd like to just take this off to see Maybe I just didn't align this correctly, and that's why it's doing it, and it just finally kind of let go. Um, or it could be also my catch can system that it's just not cooperating, and this is this is the weakest point of uh, pressure release. So I think I'm also going to change. Can you see it? Maybe not. Um, this up here. So this is the the catch can, right? And then this is the tube that comes in. The exhaust is supposed to pull the gases out, but maybe it's just it's building up too much pressure, and it's not coming out this way. So I might just delete this guy, cap this off, and then let this either breathe as like a down tube or like kind of put a filter on the end of it and bolt it up out of the way and just let it kind of flow out from underneath the car or route this back further uh, in the car. I don't know. I don't know what I want to do yet. This is frustrating. Okay, cover. Let's get it off. So I got it all cleaned up, but nothing on this guy is telling me this is where your problem is. Like I was looking for splits or cuts or anything. It's not really brittle. It does look a little pushed in. I don't know, but I am going to replace it, clean everything else up, put it all back together. And like I said, I'm going to, I'm, I'm thinking that catch can, it's got to be the culprit. Like it's not letting the engine breathe. So I'm going to reroute that, cap that guy off, kind of go from there. Hopefully my package shows up so we can start throwing this thing back together. I'm having issues. So come on. It spins, it just doesn't come out. So, that's really cool. I'm gonna have to cut that off and weld, weld it back together. This is, just, this is just, this is a fun project, you guys. It's so, so rewarding. Problem solved, kind of. It, it must have got hot or something and it just, stainless steel, Stuck to it. I probably should have put some anti-seize or something inside of there. Those <laughs> those threads are gacked. Probably when I welded this thing on there too, it um it warped and once I put that thing on there, that I, that was never coming off. Kind of sucks because that wasn't cheap at a part. Um, way I'm gonna solve it though. Obviously, trimmed it all flat and smooth, and then I took a piece of uh, the same inch diameter pipe that I had lying around and cut a little chunk out. We'll just we'll just TIG weld that guy on there real quick and um no one will ever know except for everybody who watches this video. It's fine. Completely, totally fine. Why am I always missing things? Got it. You guys are curious about my settings, they are um on.
pin holes. Perfect. No, it actually doesn't look too, too terrible. Plus, no one's ever going to see it because it's underneath the car. Problem solved. Man, that's a bummer, though, because I really thought that that whole system was going to work. And I just don't want to risk it again because I don't know if you know this, but pulling a transmission, not a fun job, nor is replacing that rear main seal and doing all that work. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Maybe those two happen at the same time as a coincidence, but I just, I'm not. I'm not going to risk it. I'm just going to vent back out the atmosphere and call this good enough. So it's been a couple of days. Not going to lie. Reason being is because I wanted to order some parts to kind of help make sure that this new rear seal doesn't leak anymore. I thought that these things were expensive. Turns out they're not. 25 bucks on Amazon will get you all the alignment tools that you will need out of billet aluminum, which is just kind of crazy to me in order to do all your seals. So this is the rear seal. Um, I'll show you when I put it in, but you know, this seal around the, the rear of the crankshaft lines it up because these things have play in them, right? And then once you put that on, then you can tighten all your bolts down in a nice star cross pattern to whatever inch pounds that it requires. And then um, that should work out quite nicely, making sure that it doesn't leak anymore, hopefully. Uh, so yeah, let me put the seal in this guy and we can start putting this car back together. Sweet. cover tightened down uh, 18 foot pounds on all these I kind of went in like a star pattern and I'm not sure if this thing works or not to be honest with you it I mean it fits in there it's got a little bit of play yet but how much play is there that, that that's gonna matter for the seal I don't know I thought that the seal would just kind of like center itself who knows if it helps or not but I mean it once it was on there, this didn't really, it just slid on, you know. Interesting. So use at your own discretion. Um, next up, we got, oh, and also put some silicone in the corners here. Obviously, I did this backwards. Normally, you're supposed to put this plate on before, and then the pan goes on second, and then you're supposed to put silicone uh, on the gasket of the pan, and then it cinches up. But because I took this piece off, I scraped away the silicone that was there cleaned it up and then put some silicone down and then put that back on reason being is because the two gaskets meet up obviously you, otherwise you'll develop a leak like right in that area there flex plate next okay so hole hole extra holes line up your extra holes why <laughs> i have no idea um is that on what is keeping me from going all the way on? It's nothing. I'm just dumb. Okay. Oh, duh. Uh, my tool's in the way. <laughs> I forgot that was there. Uh, 15. Do I have a 15? Where's my 15? I need to loosen it. So these little guys, can you see it? Oh, yeah, you can see that. So work out pretty well too. Pick these up on Amazon. It's just a little tool that bolts up where your starter bolts up and it has teeth on it and it locks the flex plate in, in place in order for you to either do like the front, putting on the balancer, doing the main bolt there, or what we're about to do here, which is the rear and the flex plate bolts. So I'll take that guy out. Hey, look, now it fits. And then I went ahead and I cleaned up all the threads on this guy here. And then I'm going to use, I'm going to try the orange, because orange is new from Term Permatex. Thread locker. You always want to put thread locker on this, because on my crankshaft, I don't know if it's for all LSs, but that's through. The, like, that goes into through 
the engine. So if you don't put any kind of like thread locker on there, it's going to have a leak. Also, you never want these guys coming undone. Uh, that would be, that'd be a bad day for sure. We're just going to, oh my gosh, did you see that? That was a lot. I wasn't expecting it. That's what she said. Um, let's try to be less messy here. Also, I really can't see that. Why not? Hmm. I need to be shaken, shaken up. Am I missing something here? It's very transparent. Maybe I cut that tip too far. That's better. That was weird. Man, I don't know. I don't know if I trust that. Have you guys used the orange before? And has it worked? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I want to bust my red out now because I just, I just don't. Screw it. This was easy to take apart, right? Totally. Totally easy. So there, yeah, that just locks, flex plate in place. So now we can crank on this guy as much as we need to, which is 1537-ish, I think, and then 74. You can hear the confidence in my voice when I say it, because I totally know what I'm doing. I'm just going off memory. I probably should look it up. I'm not gonna, though. I'm one foot pound off and your car blows up. That's on you, because I gave you a warning. Sweet. Next, I think I can put the transmission back in. Right? 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 I don't know. Right? I should tie up some of these wires. Never have I ever just wanted to give up and go in and just stop. So I'm tightening up the very top bolt on the, the transmission housing to the engine. And I hear this weird crunch and I'm like, something isn't right. And just under where the cam sensor is, the plug comes out, but the crank wiring, crank signal wiring was going through right there and it caught two of them and it pinched it ever so much that it could not come out, loosened everything up, got the wire out, the wires out, but they are, they're split, they're smashed, they're split, and they're very difficult to get at. So now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get at those wires to repair them, because with this blower in the way and everything else in the way, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get any kind of like crimping down there to be able to strip those things. I think I'm gonna have to go in through the car, pull the wiring out, repair it, shove it back through. Ah, oh, man, who, uh, don't be like me. Make sure everything is out of the way first. I thought I did. I was checking the sides. I was like, the top's fine because everything kind of comes over the, no. Nope, I just made so much more work for myself. So 
I'm not I'm not gonna quit. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna repair this stuff and then keep moving forward. I still wanna drive this thing today yet. So but now this is this is gonna take like an hour, I bet. At least at least an hour. Got it all fixed up. Uh, obviously, I just had to move my panels out of the way. And then I have a, like an access panel where all the wires run through right there. Just had to kind of remove that in order to pull the wires back out. I know it just it looks very intimidating underneath here. But um, this is where it was split right here. I just peeled back the sleeving as much as possible, uh, kind of retaining it. And then cut the wires where they were. And then put them back together with some butt connectors. And then melted those together and then i have heat shrink on both ends of the smaller one and then i have a really thick one right where um these guys all come together because i know that um these this thing's wrapped in like a i don't know what do you call that radio like frequency or whatever like so it doesn't get any kind of like weird signals that it's not supposed to um so hopefully that kind of helps out with that or this car is just gonna run like garbage from now on which is probably what is going to happen. But I gotta rewrap all this back up with tape and loom, and then I can shove it back through the hole, button all this back up, plug everything back in, and never pinch a freaking wire again. Stupid idiot, man. But yeah, that should that should work, right? Sure, why not? All back together, exhaust is on, drive shaft, everything underneath it is buttoned up, and instead of running. I mean, you, you saw that I eliminated from the exhaust the whole setup because that's the tube right there that goes down that used to go to it. Now it shoots down. Um, it's got like a, a 90 degree. And then I'm running a hose that comes all the way back here. It's all zip tied up to the frame. And then it kind of comes out. Can we see it here? Like right here. Really can't see that. But it's right there, right by the exhaust. So... That'll eliminate the smell for sure. And secondly, ultimately, when this engine just decides to explode, it'll spew all the crap out the back instead of under my tire, and then I won't crash and die. I'll just be really upset because that will be fried. But we're, it's, yeah, it's good. Sure, right now, yeah. I think I can put it back on the ground now. Check fluids. Start it up, maybe even take it for a drive. Friendly reminder, uh, go drive your Joe. It's nice out, so that's what I'm going to go do. I drove the thing a little bit last night, and it doesn't seem to be leaking anymore, so that is awesome. I'm going to go see if I can just kind of do some spirited driving and see how she reacts. I've got some tuning changes to make anyway, so why, why not kill two birds with one stone? So I'm going to go cruise my favorite roads. We'll see how it goes. Just got done putting a little over 100 miles on this thing of spirited driving and the thing no no leaks whatsoever like i did something right i am so thankful for that like it's it i it feels solid it feels sorted i feel comfortable with it um obviously i'm going to take this thing on power tour this year that's what i'm really excited for but it is kind of my plan b because i think the malibu is my plan a i would really like to get that thing done and sorted before that we got about two months in order to get that done um but we'll we'll see how that goes so if you'd like to see that hit that like hit the subscribe and a lot more coming up thanks guys